Orida, good morning. Um, so pleased to be here, I think, for uh, this conference, such an important conference on the 75th anniversary. And we've already had such inspirational speakers this morning setting the stage. What I'm going to do uh, over 15 minutes, and I'm going to be kept very much to that by, by Mark, let me give you a little bit of back, of background uh, of maybe why, why I'm here as a Bevan Commissioner, why Helen um, thought to invite me, and thank you very much, Helen, for having done that. You'll see up there KU Leuven, which is uh, Leuven is a uh, university in Belgium, uh, where I'm a visiting professor, and I spent uh, much of my um, health career working in Europe. I actually worked in the UK and then went over and worked in Brussels. And when I worked in, in, in Brussels and was working across uh, all the member states, what, what struck me in health terms was that there were certain Goldilocks countries and Goldilocks regions that I identified and were identified by others as where significant acceleration in terms of health policy and practice took place. And you can, you can look at the Finnish health system, the Estonian health system, you can see uh, what happened in, in, in the Catalan area of Spain. But I, could, I could list a whole range of them. And when I was approached uh, by Helen and, and, and the Bevan Commission, and I looked at Wales and I thought, this is another Goldilocks area for health policy and practice, isn't it? You can see it. You can see it because of the population, you can see it about the energy, you can see it from the teams, you can see it from everything that, that, that's being done. And so I was very keen to be able to come in and see is there anything that I could contribute in terms of being able to reference what's happening across Europe and beyond um, that might help uh, Wales to be able to develop yourself as this Goldilocks um, health uh, country. And the particular area that I want to be able to talk about is around health literacy. And I know you shouldn't give away the end of your talk right at the beginning, but I'm going to do that. And, and as was said, I think it's a call to action because I really do feel that there's a potential in Wales for you to be the most health literate country in Europe. I think it's there. I think it's within your grasp. And if you take that on, and, and the First Minister was talking about that. He said about being courageous, challenging ourselves. So this is my challenge. I'm turning the challenge back from the First Minister to be able to say, have you got the courage, have you got the appetite to be the most health literate country in Europe? And in doing so, everything that comes from health literacy, if we take that back, what does literacy mean? What does it mean? What does it mean that we can read and write? We assume it because we, we don't ever consciously think about it. But it allows us to learn, it allows us to communicate, it allows us to make so much more of the world if we are literate. So if we become health literate, it allows us to make that much, much more of the health services that are there. It makes us more able to take health from everywhere, not just from uh, health care. I just thought I'd start, I always like quotes, uh, and I'd start uh, the uh, uh, 18th century French, French philosopher with a better haircut than I have, who uh, said the art of medicine consists of amusing the patient while nature cures the disease. He was, uh, anyone who knows Voltaire, he's a, he was a little bit of a mischievous writer, and I thought that's a mischievous quote. And if you see that, and um, then I'm going to put... Uh, a picture up for you here, and this is uh, uh, a Canadian uh, co called Canio Pelosa. And uh, believe it or not, he's 93 years old. And uh, I'm, I'm just about to uh, uh, partake in the Great North Run, running. I, I'm chair of the Motor Neuron Disease Association, so I'm running for MD. Actually, I'll give you a, a hashtag you can say if you want to uh, contribute to my uh, Just Giving page. Sorry, small advert. Um, <laughs> And uh, he runs a 5K, anyone who does their running knows 5K in 36 minutes and 36 seconds. He holds a world record uh, at the age of uh, 93 and he can run a mile in uh, just around 10 minutes. 
And when asked, he said, well, it's just about good diet. It's about knowing uh, your body. It's about going to the gym. It's about building muscle. This is the future. In terms of health literacy, it's already here. And I think this is what we need to recognize, that we do have segments of our population who are already health literate, who are already digitally active, who are already activated. And I know there are a lot of colleagues will be in the room who are working with PAM 13 and the idea of patient activation measures, who are already activated, who are having lower morbidity and lower mortality. We know what good looks like, and good looks like being able to live the fullness for your first eight decades of your life, and then for the, hopefully the second, the last two decades of your life, you're living a good life. So you go from great to good, and you can see, he's actually probably still in great, uh, is Canio, but he's certainly in good. So we know it's there, it's within reach, we can touch it, we can see it. What does good look like? We know what it looks like. We have so much in terms of support now. It's, I, I, honestly, when you, when you go to WH Smith's and you're going off on your holidays and you look at those self-help books, I mean, they're overwhelming, aren't they? You say, oh my God, you need, you need to go into a, a dark room to be able to get over all the things they're telling you that you can do. So everything that's trying to help you to be able to connect, to engage, to be more um, health literate, is there. But we need to recognize that that's a small, small percentage of the population. So we know what good looks like for health literacy. We know the benefits of being health literate. But we also know that health inequalities, that elephant in the room, and you'll be hearing more obviously about that when, when Sir Michael Marmot speaks tomorrow, and I just wanted to put up a, a, a couple of statistics, which are, they're saddening. Uh, they're saddening to be able to see that if you look, you can see life expectancy, healthy life expectancy, and those are the figures um, taking 2011 to 13 and comparing it to 2018 to 2020. And basically, it's the more deprived communities are less healthy, they live uh, fewer years and they have a lower healthy life expectancy and that has got worse, that has deteriorated over the last 10 years. It's not improved, it has deteriorated over the last 10 years and you've got 9.7 years, a decade, an additional decade of life and again, uh, having heard Mike Mowat speak, I know how passionately he is able to do that. I will leave him to be able to do that. But what I'm saying is that when we're looking at health literacy, we don't need to look. To be honest, we don't need to look in this room so much. We need to look outside of this room. We need to look at the other elements of, com of the community and communities where we really can aid health literacy. And health literacy can be the foundation bed of being able to reduce health inequalities. And surely that's got to be our aim for, for uh, the NHS and for health services. How health literate are we is a good question. Again, I won't uh, dwell overly on, on this, this table. Um, this is some work, and I, I'll name check Christian Sorensen, um, who, who, is, uh, who I've worked with extensively, um, again, in, in, in Europe. And she's really been the... the one-person uh, campaign on health literacy, um, working out of Denmark, and now uh, she's working with the WHO. And she, she wanted to be able to say, um, let's, set a, let's set a benchmark. And you can see, look at those the, the dark fields on the left-hand side in terms of lowest levels of, of health literacy. And that picture is telling us we're not there. Whatever the country may be, and you can, you can decide the areas, Bulgaria with some of the poorest areas, and the Netherlands with some of the highest areas, but we've still got a huge amount of challenge there. Interesting to note, 
We're now not in uh, the European Union, as we know, but this is the European Parliament is moving ahead and they have set a target to make Europe health literate by 2025 by prioritising it, by giving quality assurance, by formalising it and legitimising it and linking it to other areas around patient-centred care. So it is happening. That's for Europe. I think it's actually more deliverable around these Goldilocks regions and Goldilocks countries. And I really think Wales can be one of those. I also thought we could just look at how uh, I say we, and I apologise for saying we, because the statistics here, as you can see on the top, relate to England. Uh, there are no, no uh, statistics here for uh, Wales or Scotland or Northern Ireland. But we know the basics. Education in and of itself provides for good health. Simply education. Um, four years additional education, going to university, postgraduate education will all relate to higher and better health outcomes. Then on top of that, health literacy, health education, gives you an additional boost. So education good, health education even better. And when you look at how England's doing, actually we're doing quite well, and I would imagine this will, will take us over into Wales, into Scotland, into Northern Ireland. The benchmark well on strategy, that there is an idea that there's a strategic uh, purpose, there is shared decision making, and there's some level of content regulation for health information. But strategy isn't completely done. Professional education is interesting. I uh, was Sir Nigel talking about that. And support for vulnerable groups. We are not delivering in support for vulnerable groups. So can the, that gap be closed in Wales at the same time as raising the bar? Because even for the most health literate, there's still the capability to improve those levels of health lit literacy, increase them further and get further benefits from them. It really didn't take, as I did background work for this, it really didn't take me very long to be able to find everything that's being done in Wales at the moment, which are contributory jigsaw pieces towards being that vision of being the most health literate country in Europe. If you look what you're doing in terms of strategy, if you look what you're doing in terms of the, of the Academy for Health and Physical uh, Literacy, you're doing, you have uh, the Well Me program, health literacy in schools, so you're understanding the importance of being able to get health literacy in schools. And as I say, I, I would personally, if only we could have an hour a week of every school child having health education and health literacy, the benefits that we could get from that. What are the costs? I'm not even, they're, they're, they're so minuscule, and yet the benefits could be huge. And then I've been working uh, with colleagues in Wales on, on a diabetes care programme, which is phenomenal, um, really groundbreaking work, which is using the, the, the PAM-13, the patient activation measurement scheme, to be able to measure how levels of health literacy are impacting on individuals' ability to improve their own health position, their own health status. So I really do see you as having that glass as being half full and you've got a lot that you're able to build on. I won't dwell on this, but what I would say is that not to take health literacy just in its narrow form. I do other work to be able to see that as individuals, we get involved in health in so many different ways in, as regulators, improvers, educators, governors, in business, there are so many different ways that we can reinforce that central principle of um, health, um, health literacy. I will dwell on just for one second to be able to say, I always love this quote. Uh, this quote uh, was actually told to me. Um, uh, it was someone who'd had a, a hip operation and they went, they went to see their uh, consultant and their consultant said, my advice is to take my advice. 
And, and how, how often do you sort of hear that? And that's a, it's a warming feeling. You almost want that paternalism. But we need to be able to recognise that we need to be, again, it's about meet, facing that challenge, meeting that challenge to step away from that paternalism and being health literate enough to know that we're able to do that. And that we will need the healthcare professions to be able to come the other way. It's a two-way street. We're now seeing training. We're seeing, honestly, when you talk to um, clinicians coming out of training now, their whole mindset is much more around respecting health literacy and having a completely different view of the patient to that. My advice is to take my advice view. So, last slide. Mark will be happy to know. Um, can Wales be the most health literate country in Europe? And I put there... Estonia is being, they, they put that marker up, and I've been to Estonia, they, they live and breathe the fact that they are the digital, they want to be seen to be the digital um, governance and di digital government um, country of Europe. And I think, as I say, Wales can be that for health literacy. Set an ambition, uh, and I'm totally again uh, with, with Sir, Sir Nigel talking about the fact that we don't, we are, we are struggling, we do not have a vision around health at the moment. And I think we can set a vision around um, health literacy. Grass the bull by both horns, which means it is about healthcare professionals coming towards citizens and citizens coming towards healthcare professionals. Establish a baseline and a trajectory, and, 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 and the Bevan Commission is fantastic at respecting the evidence base and that's what we'd need to do build a robust theory of change understand how that process is going to happen think about what health literacy means and how we can uh, how we can achieve it don't reinvent the wheel there is so much good practice out there already we don't need to start creating the wheel again build on it and the last one and i think this is one very easy one for a, for a welsh audience be brave um, and come back in three years, come back in five years, and hopefully be able to really reflect on significant progress to be the most health literate country in Europe. Thank you.